Hey everyone, Wolflord Row here. Before I begin today, a huge thank you to Leo for the virtual gift voucher. Huge thank you my friend for the support, it is truly appreciated. Thank you. But on to today. Today we discuss the meeting between Ephrael Stern and Ivrain, leader of the Inari. Spoiler warning to begin, the events we are discussing today are from the Warhammer 40k novel Ephrael Stern, The Heretic Saint by David Annadale. As always, I really recommend you read the story for yourself first, as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. Not only that, we help to support the Great Games Workshop and Black Library, because without them, we don't have this amazing lore to talk about. I will put a link in the description as always. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. Okay, so Ephrael Stern, the sister of battle promised to the sisterhood before her very birth. You could undoubtedly say it was her destiny to rise within the order of our martyred lady. Because from the very beginning it became clear she was fated for greatness, rising to the rank of Sister Superior in record time. However, an easy life for Stern was not to be, for during her investigation of the world Parnis, attempting to discover just what had befallen the lost convent of sisters, she fell in battle against the ruinous powers. And this was where her fate was to be forever altered, as the souls of the lost convent, tormented by the servants of Slanesh, poured all of their combined psychic power into the body of the fallen stern, rebirthing her from death, imbued with all of their combined powers, the sainted saviour, the heretical witch. Now Stern has since had a life of conflict, often hunted by the Imperium she loves and going up against dangerous adversaries such as Araman of the Thousand Sons in her hunt for the fabled Black Library. However, this particular story takes place with Stern having awoken across the Great Rift amid the darkness of Imperium Nihilus. Unaware of just what has taken place in the other half of the Imperium, she fears the worst. With no Astronomicon, the Emperor must be dead. But regardless of this, she vows to fight on until her last breath in his name. And it's during the course of this story that Stern and her Eldari companion Kaiganil, the one-time Harlequin, once again enter into the webway in search of aid against a coming threat, and the Inari already await. The Eldari seated on the throne united these contradictory feelings. She was swathed in crimson and black, her face sternly forbidding. Her eyes glinted with hard judgement, and the hint of cold dark perversity. She looked at Kaiganil, and then at Stern as they approached. Her eyes narrowed slightly, as if in pain, as Stern drew near. The evaluating gaze with which she favoured Stern was a long one, and carried on for several seconds after Stern and Kaiganil stopped a few paces from the throne. Your power announces your arrival, Ivrain said to Stern. It is a psychic nova, I have rarely seen its like. Stern bowed her head, she said nothing. Ivrain was clearly musing, not in the mood for conversation just yet. I wonder if you know the danger you represent, Ivrain said. To the enemies of what I fight for, I think I do, said Stern, sensing an opening now. Perhaps, 
And perhaps neither you nor they fully understand that either. Perhaps no being does, not even the gods. What would you say to that? That I must be watchful, not to let such words lead to hubris on my part. Ivrain smiled coldly. Quite so. Quite so. She turned her palm up, and the gesture wordlessly changed the subject. I had thought I had heard the last of a need for an alliance with the humans for some time. It seems I was wrong. Must another be sought so soon after the last? Ah, the Eldari. Always a conversation of riddles. Always a question to answer a question. Ivrain may be the Herald of Iniad, but she's still your standard Eldar, through and through. But I have to say, I already prefer this Ivrain to most I've seen before. She always seems to come across a little naive to me, like she's just being swept along by circumstances out of her control, a little out of her own depth. But here, already in this short encounter, she has that seeming edge of dangerousness, a bit more matureness for want of a better word. And well, that's exactly what she should have in my opinion. As the herald of Iniad, the leader of the Inari, the hope for the Eldari race. The last, Stern asked puzzled. She glanced at Kaiganil, who looked just as confused. At least, she noted, Ivrain had not referred to humans as monkey. That had been a good omen. I would have thought I had done more than enough to help your race, thrice born. I'm afraid I do not understand. Ivrain cocked her head amused. No, you don't, do you? Then I will be more direct. Was it not enough for me to assist in the return of Rabute Gilliman? The floor seemed to heave beneath Stern. Her balance was suddenly more precarious than it had been in the shrine of Saint Afrina. She grappled with what Ivrain had said. The words were fragile, their meaning too great. Gilliman, she said. Gilliman has returned. She almost wept with gratitude. The Emperor still watched over the rest of the Imperium. Nothing else could explain the return of the Avenging Son. The return of the Primarch, Rabute Gilliman. It's always interesting to read people's reaction to Gilliman's return. And it is quite surprising here. Stern doesn't even question Ivrain, just reacting to her words like it must be true. Now, Stern may have a better relationship than most with the Eldar, due to her friendship with Kaiganil, but it's not like Gilliman was around two years ago here. He's a legend from an age of myth. 10,000 years ago, his very body displayed within a shrine upon McCrag. I think Stern's a little too accepting here. Yes, she has faith in the Emperor, and being cut off in the Imperium Nihilus, believing he must be dead. Perhaps there's that part of her mind, yearning to hear anything that could prove he yet still lives. But to just instantly accept the word of an Eldar, even one such as Ivrain, a race renowned for their manipulation of others, I think that's pretty naive even if in this instance it is true. Ivrain leaned forward slightly. Then you know nothing of what has transpired on the other side of the Great Rift. We do not, Herald of Iniad, said Kaiganil. Then the reason for your presence here becomes much more interesting. Does the Imperium still exist? Stern asked, torn between hope and dread. It does. Its state was desperate. I believe it still is. Stern nodded, 
the Imperium's extremity must have been terrible for Gilliman to awake. But it endures, said Ivrain. When I last took my leave, it endured. You have my thanks for this news. Ivrain turned to Kaiganil. Now tell me why you have sought me out. For the reason you spoke of when we entered, Herald of Iniad. Once again, the Eldari and the humans must stand together. Against what? Kaiganil looked at Stern. There is something approaching, said Stern. A nothingness of terrible vastness. I do not know much more than that. But I am sure that, if we do not stop it, it will consume the galaxy. And here Ivrain witnesses a vision of which Stern has been tormented by. A vast nothingness in the far reaches of space, threatening to block out the very stars. And I'll be honest, the first time I read this, I instantly thought, oh, the Tyranids are coming. It's the hive mind. This is going to get interesting. Until I realized this story is set before the Psychic Awakening. And it's actually talking about the Necrons. Oh well, still good, don't get me wrong. But there's just that something about the fault of an impending hive fleet. Something very few threats in the galaxy can truly match for sheer fear factor. Honestly, in my opinion, I really think the Tyranids stand apart in sheer scale of fear-inducing terror. But like I said, that's just my opinion. In the world of the Imperium, of course, I'm pretty sure demons are quite terrifying. Now back to the story, their meeting then concludes with Ivrain agreeing to help Stern and the Imperium when the time comes. With Stern and Kaiganil departing once more. And it definitely makes me think how we need a reigniting of the war in heaven. The Necrons versus the Eldari. On a grand scale. Who would win? I think the Necrons have to be given the edge, especially with everything that's happened to the Eldar since the fall of their empire. And not to mention the Necrons now have their returned Silent King, a strategist on a level not easily countered. Apart from Imatek the Stormlord of course. Yes, I'm still on Team Imatek. But I digress, I would definitely love to see this move forward in the narrative, rather than each of the races involved in their own wars against Chaos, Ivrain against Slanesh and Sarek against the Great Rift. Don't get me wrong, it makes sense. I would just love the narrative to move to a reignited war in heaven. That could be a fascinating storyline. It's certainly not likely, but I guess time will tell. And what of Stern? Well, her story definitely continues. And we'll talk a little more of her soon. But she's certainly a nice dynamic compared to the true saint, as it were, in Celestine. Who you could truly say is the Emperor's chosen sword. Appearing only where he sends her. Will Stern ascend to such a role? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But as always guys, what do you think? Do you think Stern is rather naive like I do, in believing the word of Eldari without a second pause? Can the Eldari truly be trusted in all matters when it relates to all circumstances involving the Imperium? Or will they betray their word as soon as it favours them? And what do you think of Stern? Do you rank her alongside the likes of Celestine? Do you find her character more appealing? Or does she deserve to be called the heretic witch and pursued by the Inquisition? As always guys, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support 
truly means a lot to me, it really does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.